Our next speaker is working on his Engaging Humor Level 5 project, Reflect on Your Path. He started on his Engaging Humor pathway, pathway to challenge himself as a speaker. This speech completes his pathways. Whoa, that's awesome. He invites everyone to keep their cameras and mics on and engage in the speech with comments, reactions, or questions. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker will be evaluated by Toastmaster Jim Larson. Help me welcome Dr. Mansur Hasib, Humor and Spice. Humor and Spice, Dr. Mansur Hasib. Is humor hard? I used to think so. I love stand-up comics, and I wondered how they do it so effortlessly. It's amazing how Seinfeld makes humor out of nothing. Toastmasters and guests. That's why I started my journey in engaging humor. The first thing I learned is the art of misdirection. Our esteemed Toastmaster, Oscar, helped my inception of learning humor with his speech about THC in cannabis. Twist, humor, and clarity. Set up the audience to expect something, then give them something wild and unexpected. For example, in my district final speech this year, I started with this sentence. My father led by example. He taught me a lot of things I should not do. Voila, it became humor. <laughs> That's how easy it is. Recently, I was invited to compete at an international online speech contest against five other professional speakers from all over the world. Amazingly, I won. And tonight, I will give you an encore of the winning speech. You are invited to turn on your bikes and cameras and react and respond as you please. If you feel like laughing, that is great because that will inspire me. And this is the way I began. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining my English class. <laughs> Have you ever been an understudy? Do you even know what that means? Do I study under the table? <laughs> under the bed? Or outside under the blue sky? Or do I simply study less? No other language is as confusing as English. <laughs> Ask yourself, why is common sense not common? And if it's not common, why do we call it common sense? And why do we call it social media? From what I've seen, people are most angry, hateful, and antisocial on social media. My troubles with English began as a child after I had already learned a much more logical language at home. At school, my teacher said, P-U-T is put. However, B-U-T is but. And I went, huh? <laughs> she explained, I am big, but you are small. So I wrote it out. <laughs> that extra T and comma in the wrong place hurt. 
but I learned. One day, she brought vegetables to class, and I learned an eggplant doesn't grow eggs. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's not even a plant. Bay leaf has nothing to do with the bay. <laughs> I had heartburn, <laughs> but then I learned it had nothing to do with my heart or with fire. I learned bigger words. H-A-N-G-E-R is hanger. Beautiful. So D-A-N-G-E-R should be danger. But it isn't. Why? I grew up and learned dogma isn't a dog's mama. Dogmatic isn't an automatic dog. <laughs> a vegetarian eats vegetables. But a humanitarian doesn't eat humans. <laughs> At least I hope they don't. Yeah. I came to America and my friend wanted to show me American culture and take me to a gentleman's club. <laughs> I dressed up in a suit and tie. He said, drop the tie. Only after I went in there did I understand why. No gentleman in there. It's not even a club. I stood in line at the grocery store and the British person in front of me asked, Have you got any mice? I said, What an amazing country. America, the land of plenty. They even sell mice. At grocery stores? The clerk shot back. No, sir. We have excellent pest control. Do you know a store where I can find some? No. Why do you want such a store, sir? Are you from animal control? No, 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 no. I want to cook with it. What? You want to cook my sir? We don't do that in America. No, 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 not mice, not mice. Mice. It's a spice. Spice. Oh, mace. Row 42, sir. I got married. And my mother-in-law, who doesn't eat pork, came for barbecue. And we had the hardest time convincing her a hamburger has no ham. And a hot dog isn't made from dog meat. What about word differences based on country? Do you know what a crisp is in the UK? In the UK, it's crisp. But in the USA, it's potato chips because crisp is a cool breeze. <laughs> but in the UK, chips are French fries. Is it because they hate the French? Someone please tell them French fries aren't French. Yeah. They're American. I learned that in France. And now, if you're ready, it's your turn to show me what you learned. What is this? Banana. Banana. Banana, na, na, na. <laughs> And what spice is this in the British accent? 
Mais. 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 <laughs> And what is this? An apple. A mango. Mango. A man. Go 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 go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> great job, everyone. All of you get an A in my class. Now, wasn't learning English in my class fun? Give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you very much. So the first evaluator is Jim Garson, and he was evaluating Dr. Mincer's speech. Jim Larson. Dr. Mansour, that speech you gave was awesome. I laughed, I laughed, I laughed. As an English teacher, I so related to what you're saying. I've been overseas. I have taught English to English learners. I know the struggle. So that in mind, there was some great humor in that. I wrote down some notes. I'm just going to go through my notes here. Your vocal variety was great. I'm going to use that word a lot. Great, great vocal variety. Really appreciate it to end expressions. You're very expressive. Great body language, the way you moved, the way you use your space there. You did a really wonderful job. What else did I write? Oh, you, you, got, you got our attention right off with your introduction. That's always good. Good job there. Your eye contact with the camera was spot on. I felt like you're looking right into my soul. So good job there. <laughs> you drew us in. What did I write here? You drew us into your, oh, your frustrations as a student. I loved how you did that with the, un, un, misunderstanding the words and your prof with the word but on it. That was good. I like that too. What I would work on, if I were you, I would work on working in more props maybe. Like when you talk about hot dog, if you have some, maybe a picture of a dog in a bun perhaps, or if you have a stuffed dog or a real dog, I don't know what you have in your house. You Maybe if you have a dog, you can pet while doing it and then shoo it away when you're done, but that's probably too much. And when you talk about Humanity, or what? What was it? Human. What you know? What you said? Humanitarian. Humanity. About don't eat people. Maybe you could hold up a Barbie doll or something like that. So good job there. So that's my challenge to you as well to work in more props. And also, if I were you, I would look into comedy open mics in your area. When I lived in Northern Virginia before I moved to Hawaii. I was doing stand-up comedy at open mics. They're a lot of fun. People would love that speech of yours. You might have to cut it down shorter because open mics tend to be three minutes long or so, a little bit shorter than what you can do here. But I would look into that. That will give you another audience. You'll hear more laughter. You'll get more energy from that and more feedback. And it's a lot of fun to do comedy open mics. If there were venues here on the big island, I would be doing them, but there's just not so many venues here. If I move to Oahu, there's going to be more, but I'm not moving. So good job. Those are my comments to you. Thank you for doing that. Have a good day.